Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we come together this morning and prepare ourselves now to celebrate the ascension of the Lord just in a day's time, we acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that, you, that in every respect you are very religious, for as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth, and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God and even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent. Because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, We should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them. But some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you, that he will take from you what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Mother Teresa famously said that, again, when it came to serving those who were entrusted to her care, even when news crews would point out the many more strewn down the roads of Calcutta, and she would only maybe take three, four, five at a time. And they said, what difference do you think you're going to make? She just looked at him simply and said, God doesn't ask me to succeed. He asked me to try. We understand, dear friends, that sometimes God's going to call us out of our comfort zone and it's not going to be necessarily a winning situation. And he's still calling us anyway. That it's not always going to be received. For Jesus Christ himself, he had people reject him. When we go to the most important teaching of all, the teaching on the Holy Eucharist in John 6, when he proclaims this and keeps pushing deeper and deeper into it every time they push back, doubles down and even triples down, what happened? People walked. They went away from him. Can you imagine being that close to the God of the universe, him as far as maybe I am to you now, and you just can't receive it and you walk on them. This happened. This happened in the midst of our world. And same thing happens for Paul. He gets to Athens and he makes this sterling defense of the faith, calling the Athenians out of themselves to this godly existence to basically illustrate this unknown God that you're worshiping. Yeah, he has a name and he supersedes all the rest of this. But the second we hit those words, the resurrection from the dead, the Athenians start to lose it. They scoff. They look at it. Oh, we'd like to talk to you about this another time. <laughs> you ever seen that one? I think we've all encountered these moments, right? To go share your faith is going to pull you out of your comfort zone. And, but yet the Lord, our Lord looks at each of us and he says, I still want you to try. And why is that? Because the Lord is going to work through you. As he will through every one of us if we are faithful to his calling. 
Because what is it about this that God has tried to do in our own hearts? Well, he says it in the gospel this morning, does he not? That he leaves because he's going to send the spirit of truth who will give all truth to us. And we are to be vessels of that gift of truth, whether it is received or whether it is not. We make visible the invisible reality of God through our person. In the fact that we are created in God's image and likeness, we've been baptized in him, we have received that gift of confirmation, the rushing of the Holy Spirit upon us, and he wants to use us in such a way that we share the gospel message that we allow ourselves to share it in the midst of our world. Do we do that? Or when those moments come and the Lord puts it on our heart and we know he puts it on our heart, do we still find a way to just slide away, to not engage it? It's very easy to do the latter. It's much harder to be responsive to being pulled out of our comfort zone and to open our mouth and proclaim this gospel message in the world that's quite hostile towards it. It's not easy. And yet our Lord looks at all of us and says, I want you to be my disciples, and this is going to be part of taking up your cross and following me. So we can't be afraid. And we ourselves must be faithful in our relationship with God to go deeper to not only continue to learn of the truths of the faith, but to pray with them in such a way that they go from just head knowledge into our very person. Because when that happens, regardless of success rates, so to speak, something will move in another soul, even if they don't even realize it. And it will start an ability for God to work within that heart to bring maybe somebody else that he is calling to himself into relationship with him. But that only starts if we're faithful to our call. So like St. Paul this morning who goes out and boldly proclaims the gospel, let us not be afraid. Let's not worry about whether we win, lose, or draw. Let's just ask the Lord to give us the courage to do what he's asking us to do and be faithful to what he asks. Confident in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. For those who lead the church in Christ's name, for the Spirit's gift of humility, we pray to the Lord. For preachers and teachers among the faithful, for attention to guidance of the Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For catechumens and all who seek deeper faith, for hearts warmed by the Spirit's fire, we pray to the Lord. Lord for young people and all discerning their place in God's plan, for visions of the future promised by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and all struggling with more than they can bear, for the spirit of strength and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the dead, both known and unknown, for the life eternal and the spirit of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord and as we lift up a special intention in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, strengthen us in the gift of our faith that we may have the courage to share it with others as you prompt our hearts to step outside of our comfort zones and bring the gospel message to all those in need. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. The fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. May our sacrifices be the state of cleansing from the Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present, the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. Lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince, the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everyone.